In this tutorial, we will demonstrate the Texture Toolpass tool in combination with a pre-created set of vectors to produce an even more dynamic texture pattern to that created with a standard profile toolpath. These vectors were created using the 2D Vector Texture tool as explained in the related vector drawing tutorial. So we're going to start by closing down the current file and opening up the project containing the vectors. So file close and then to open an existing file and we're going to pick the vector textures vector drawing.crv file and immediately we're presented with a screen with a series of vectors. Now if we take a look at our layer drop down we can see there are five different layers containing vectors. There is the cutout which you can see on the screen which is the rectangular vector which I will switch off and we'll start working our way down. So we've got the wave pattern that we can see on the screen currently and then we have the step which is a similar pattern but stepping up sort of vertically through the page and then we have a swirl pattern which shows there are sort of a, a variable offset between these vectors and then finally the wood grain effect should we want to create a sort of faux wood grain type texture. Okay so we're going to come back up to the top now and select the wave pattern and I've selected that layer and now I'm going to move across to look at the sort of machining parameters. So I'm going to look, move away from the drawing menu and then look to open the material setup. So we're going to be using three quarter inch material. Our XY datums in the lower left hand corner. Our materials, uh, our Z zeros are from the material surface. And I'm happy with my rapid and home positions. So I'm just going to OK that now. And we're going to move up to the number of toolpath operations. And there is one there called texturing toolpath. So when we open this form, we're faced with a number of variables, including the ability to create a textured toolpath without needing any vectors. This was used in the Rocket Nameplate 2D toolpath tutorial where we used the textured toolpath command to create a scalloped effect in the pocketed region. But in this case we're actually working from a pre-created set of vectors. So at the top of this sort of main part of the form it says use selected vectors as pattern. So I will select that now and as you can see most of the form has been disabled with just a few parameters remaining. But the first thing we really need to deal with is what tool we're going to be using and in this case I'm going to be using a half inch ball nose so I'm going to select that from the menu and then we're going to move down to specify the start depth. So this is the sort of start depth from which the textures are going to be created and for the start point we will leave this as zero but you'll see later on that we may need to modify it to get the desired effect. So keeping that as zero We've already selected to use the vectors as the pattern and now we come down to sort of a key area here which is specifying the maximum cut depth. So in essence we will be varying the cut depth of the profile cuts using this tool and our maximum cut depth will be 0.1 and our minimum cut depth at the moment is just specified at 5 thou. But what we're going to do first, I'm going to tone this right the way down to 0.1. So essentially our maximum cut depth is going to be 0.1 and our minimum is going to be 0.1. So we're going to be cutting at 0.1 depth, which is going to be just like a profile cut. So I'm just going to scroll down now and just change this uh, name to be wave in line with the layer. And I'm going to calculate that now. So I just need to select the vectors and we'll come into the 3D view and just press play on the simulation. And we can see that uh, the toolpath that's created is very much like a standard profile toolpath. There is no change in the Z heights of each of the passes. It's a very consistent profiled look. Okay, so this is what we would expect from a profile toolpath. Now the key with the tool here is if I double click back in is to use this minimum cut depth variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from being the minimum cut depth being 0.1 to my minimum cut depth being just 5 thou. So each of the passes will be at a consistent height but vary between 5 thou and basically 100 thou. So as I'm going to calculate that now I'm just going to reset that preview and when I play this you'll see there's quite a significant change now. You can see that we've got a much better more dynamic texture where we've got the variation in these sort of profile heights. But if we look a little bit more closely we can see there are some areas 
Well, we've only gone in by a small amount, okay, because of the variation that we set between 5,000 and 100,000. In some areas, the tool is only dipping in by 5,000. So in order to make this a little bit more of greater depth, and we can come back into the toolpath and just open up the parameters where it says start depth. So start depth, currently we are at zero. Therefore, our minimum depth could be just 5,000 below that start depth, in which case we may not get adjacent profiles overlapping each other. So in this case, I'm going to increase this by 50,000 to 05 and just add in the cut depth the same 50,000. So in essence, we're going to be lowering the whole of the texture down by 50,000. So I'm going to calculate that now and just reset the preview and then we'll play this and you'll see that we get a much more dynamic texture. So we can just rotate that round and you can see that that really is giving, and if we have a look particularly on the edge, you can see the variance in the heights across that edge, showing those profiles all at varying heights from basically 50 thou down to 150 thou. Okay, so what we're going to do now is move away from the wave pattern and we're going to take a look at the swirl. So I'm just going to close out from the preview and come back into the 2D view switch off the wave pattern and switch on the swirl pattern and then we're going to come back in now and take a look at the same toolpath with this really quite unusual uh, wave texture that was created using the vector texture tool so I'm going to pop open the form now we're going to use the same ball nose and I'm just going to go back now to the original start height of zero and we're going to lower the um, uh, maximum cut depth from 0.15 to just 0.1. So I'm going to use the pattern. I'm going to select the pattern now. And in this case, we're going to call this swirl and calculate. And we have the toolpath presented in the 3D view. I'm just going to reset the preview now. And then we're going to play that toolpath. And as you can see, this is a very nice dynamic effect. And what's quite nice is what we'll do is we'll reflect on this with the standard profile. So I'm going to just undo that last command now, just come back in and I'm going to switch the minimum depth from 005 to being 0.1. So we'll get a consistent profile type look and just now play that. And you can see that there is a real loss in depth by obviously not varying that height. As soon as I now reset that and come back into the toolpath, switch that down to 005, recalculate and then reapply, we can see we get a significant change in the depth of that texture. I can further enhance that by seeing that we can see some sort of flat areas here where we aren't going down by a significant depth and coming back in now, maybe increase the start depth up by 50 thou and also the max cut depth by 50 thou. Just recalculate that, reset the preview and reapply. And now we're going to get an even bigger dynamic effect. OK, so we can see that there's quite a lot of um, tools at our use in order to be able to vary this uh, texture to really create a wide variety of patterns. Now, it should be noted that if I come back in and just reapply now without any change, I will get a completely different texture. So I'm going to calculate that again now and we can see that there are some lines in different areas. And if I play that over the top, you will actually see some extra areas being machined away. So you can see that is cutting away extra material because essentially the second or regenerated toolpath was different to the original because it's uniquely setting those cut depths on a case by case basis. OK. Now we can look to create a completely different effect by picking a different tool. So I'm going to come back into the swirl toolpath and come up to the top where we've selected ball nose half inch. And I'm going to open the tool database and I'm going to pick just a V bit 90 degrees and then come down and just actually I'm going to start depth, reset that back to zero. So at least we're all starting from the same position and 0.1 on the max cut depth. And I'm going to calculate that now, just reset the preview and then press play. Now, in particular, when using a V-bit tool, you really get an understanding of the different depths because you can see in just some areas where the tool is just dipping in by, you know, the 5,000 and other areas where we're getting a full cut depth to 100,000. 
and of course given the nature of the tool with its sort of with its point then it's clearly that we can see there are significant areas where we're getting large flat regions where the tool is not dipping in that far so this is where changing the start depth and the max cut depth makes a big difference so we're going to increase this by 50 thou in both cases and then just recalculate and I'm just going to reset that preview now and just press play and you'll see now that we really do get a fantastic effect so this is the swirl pattern using the v-bit tool um, along with the uh, vector texture uh, toolpath and you've got a fantastic textured panel okay so now we're going to move across and look at the wood grain effect so with that I'm just going to come back to the 2d view and just going to switch off the swirl pattern and we're going to switch on the wood grain so I'm going to select the texture now and come back into the texturing toolpath and I'm just going to switch on the use selected vectors as pattern and come back up to the tool and move away really from the v-bit tool and we're going to use a quarter inch ball nose so I'm going to select that now and we're just going to specify our start depth at zero and our maximum cut depth at 0.1 and I'm going to reset the minimum depth to the same as the maximum cut depth so we can see the same as what we would get with the profile and I'm just going to call this wood grain now and we'll go ahead and apply or calculate we've got our toolpath created I'm just going to reset the preview now and we'll just play that to see the effect we're going to get so as you can see we definitely have got some graining effect it is giving slightly the faux wood grain but of, at the moment, we've just not got enough depth variation in the adjacent um, toolpaths. So with this, I'm going to come back into the command. So we're going to look to decrease the minimum depth from 0.1 down to just 5 thou. And we're going to recalculate that now and just reset the preview and play. And you'll see that we're going to get a massively different effect with such a simple change on the form. So we can see that there now we can see if we look at the end you can see the variation in the different heights of the wood grain so that is looking really nice and we can also extend and move away really from the ball nose tool and have a look at what this would look like with the v-bit tool so i'm just going to pop open the tool path again we're going to select the uh, 90 degree v-bit and we can go straight ahead and apply. I'm not going to change the start and maximum cut depth for the meantime. I'm just going to calculate that, reset the preview and press play. And as you can see, we don't necessarily need to change that start depth and maximum cut depth because of the nature of our vectors being so close together, we're still getting a really fantastic effect. OK, so we can see that there now. Now, as you can see, there are still some flats. So you may say, do you know what? Maybe I do want to modify that, in which case I can come back in and increase that from 0 to 50 thou and our max cut depth from 100 to 150 thou. Reapply, reset the preview, press play, and you'll see that we get a much, much deeper effect. So this may be a little too deep, but you can certainly see that we're getting a really nice faux wood grain effect. OK, now the final thing we want to cover really is nothing to do with the texturing tool buff, which is really about trimming the textured panel down to the correct size. So with this, I'm going to come back to the wave pattern. So I'm just going to reset the preview and then just uh, press the um, play for the particular wave tool path that we created earlier on. And I'm going to come back to the sort of tiled view here where we've got the 2d and 3d view and i'm just going to change the 2d view away from the wood grain effect and we are going to have the wave pattern on the screen we've got the wave pattern shown at the bottom and i'm just about to switch on the cutout pass okay so we're going to switch that on come back in now and just select that vector and what we're looking to do is just trim away the edge here OK, we can see there by the nature of the tool and the way it runs off the side of the part that we've got these ridges running down the side that we just need to trim away. Now, we need to be aware that due to the fact we're using the texturing toolpath command, we will not be able to use these both in X and Y as a seamless pattern. It's only going to work across the grain. So I'm only going to be able to match sort of end on end here, not top and bottom. 
Okay, so I'm going to come across and close the preview and come up to the profile toolpath. And I'm just going to select the start depth of zero, cut depth as full material thickness, which if I didn't know, I could enter Z equals, and that will give me the full depth. The tool we're going to use is a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to be machining outside the vectors, and I'm just going to call this cutout. Okay, so with this now, I can now apply that toolpath, which will give us that profile. And I'm just going to zoom in now so we can see this. And I'm going to play that in the preview, which is going to cut the edge of the panel away. We can see that the waste material is not connected to my panel. So I can double click on that to remove it. And now we have a beautiful edge to that panel. OK, so that's just how to trim that away. This is why in many cases we do create oversized panels and then trim that back with a profile uh, to get the true shape that we need. OK, so what we've seen here is the use of the texturing toolpath in combination with the vectors created in the 2D drawing video to really create a fantastic textured panel effect. Now this is on top really of the previous uh, video where we looked at the 2D toolpath. So that was purely using the profile toolpath along with changing the different tools and different depths to get the effect. Here we've got the chance to take that a stage further with using the texturing toolpath where we can vary the heights of adjacent passes to create an even more dramatic effect.